Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And Carly Bird. Week 40. Carly, if you take 40 weeks and you put that into a year or let's say a monthly kind of rotation, how many months is 40 weeks? Why are you doing this to me? 10? Yes, it is as a question. So huge shout out to our one fan that's actually there. Uh, Let's see who we got her there. Hey there, Carol Ann. (laughs) Paul. Oh, God, I love her so much. Um, <clears throat> yes, this is 10 months, which means, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll ask our one fan that's actually watching this right now on a Friday night. So we really know who the, all the cool cats are, by the way, with this. All one of them. We have only two months left in the year, which means we've only missed two weeks. Two months? No. Wait, what? What? That is being memed, by the way. That's going to be memed. <laughs> So I'll repeat this again for everyone at home. Oh, you mean until August? <clears throat> we have been doing this for 10 months. Yeah. Because we've done 40 weeks. This we is week 40. In August. Yes, this is week 40. So let me finish. Let me finish. And then you can talk again. With that said, out of the 40 weeks, we've only probably missed about two. It can can sit can like continuously. We've only missed two weeks, I think. Which means since August, we've only taken a break two weeks, guys. Which Slow clap for us because I think that's pretty cool. Um, the fact that, like, if you guys also follow my other channel, Fishing the DMP, I do plug. that. <clears throat> plug, yeah, sponsor plug. Um, the point is, like, that's gotten a lot of episodes, but like, I shoot like four or five per week. This thing, and I've missed a couple of weeks, by the way, with Fishing the DMV, but I make up for it because of the volume. Like, I'll do three episodes here, three episodes there. What's so crazy about this is the one person with no plans on a Friday night. Oh, hey, Caroline. hey, Caroline, huge shout out, huge shout out to you. But anyway, the whole the whole awesome thing about this is that we haven't missed but two weeks in a in a year, basically. Yeah. And it's so weird when you think that, and it's like, oh yeah, we've been really consistent with this. And All because of you. No, it's not because of me. It's just because of the voices in my head. Um, so huge shout out to whatever medication I actually need. All that I keep voices. doing this. Anyway, to get it, get it off that weird weird trip. So we have a couple of announcements to make before. We get into the show today, which is a really good special one, I think, because it's redemption for, oh, you never told your other friend in California about today. My other friend. Tess. Yeah. Did you tell her about tonight? No. Tess, huge shout out to you. This episode is actually for you. <laughs> this episode is basically because of you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm just going to retry. Oh, no, no, no. Don't give it out. I'm going to let you tell that story. But first, the news is, Carly, what's happening tomorrow? I was just trying to think of a song that goes along with what's happening tomorrow, but I actually can't think of the actual tune, and I don't want you to sing it because you're tone deaf. I so graduate. He graduates with his master's in business administration. Yep. So, and this was so crazy, is guys. I literally had a ceremony that I had to do today, and his hooding ceremony. I had a hooding ceremony and our award this ceremony. Ho- this hood, so, like little Harry Potter character, which is our badge, basically. Like if you think about Boy Scouts, it's like this. Like, it's like our merit it's badge. It's an actual whatever. hood. I didn't yeah. even know a hooding ceremony was an actual <clears throat> hood that they put around your neck. Did you actually have a ceremony? You're like with a hood and like. No, I didn't because hood. I didn't get a master's degree. Okay, anyway, well, I got one in a bachelor's degree. So you got a hood for a bachelor's degree? No, but I got like the robe and everything. I had a robe and everything. I oh, did. Cool. So you're Harry Potter too. Anyway, the point is, this is how consistent we are that we're trying to. Why, well, thank you, Caroline. Oh my goodness, huge shout out! We got two people. Tom. We're gonna scare the second person. Hey, who's the second person? <clears throat> but anyway, person? I show yourself. I was not going to miss a week for this, especially week forty, which is really cool, because to me, like, I didn't think we'd make it ten weeks. Now, I know we talked about this in the last episode, where it's like, oh, this was hard or whatever. Like this section was hard. Like it was like January and February for me. It was like whew, that was a grind, and then now it's like for some reason it's like easier now, which is so weird. Because I think it's because like we're closer to the goal line. So it's yeah. like, we're going to make it now. Because, spoiler, if we failed in December, it's like, whatever. If we fail in July, I think both of us would be like, oh, yeah, remember that time we tried to do a podcast every week? Well, when did you fail? Two weeks before. <laughs> before. It's like if you were before told. Before our year mark. Yeah, it's like saying, like, I'm going to run a marathon and complete it. Well, when did you quit? Um, the finish line was right there. I was yeah. like, I'm done. Yeah. It's like, you're going to hate yourself. And so weird. It's like, the closer you get to the finish line, the more you're like, fuck it, we're going we're gonna to do this. Like, at this point. Because like, it, it is. I have a friend group, believe it or not, shocker, 
Huge shout out to Matt Caslin, Max Goosen, and Seth Garland. Seth, you're weird. Um, and it's talking to them like, oh, wow, you did this every week. That's impressive. And I'm like, ah, it's not. And then I talk to you. He's like, we did this every week for a year. And it's like people can't even do a, a diet that long. We keep talking about how we're actually going to like batch all the episodes too and do them all at one yeah. time. We still haven't done that. No, we, we still have. Nope. It's still every single week we are. <clears throat> and it, obviously, I mean, our hair hairstyles change. Like, Mom. <laughs> hey, mom. Huge shout out to fan. huge shout out to, to Linda and Carol Ann for coming here. For right. Mom and mom too. Besties. Um, but yeah, so so we're here for this episode here, which is um. I thought for the 10 week, the, the 10 month anniversary, this is 10 months, guys, we've been doing this show for, for mom, Linda Aarons, who's at home. And again, Linda Aarons, huge shout out to you for, um, to, to being there today. I really appreciate it. That was really awesome. And thank you so much for finding dead pants. Um, that was impressive. Oh, I didn't tell you this. So he was pantsless in the car today. <clears throat> he drove home car? from landscaping and he was going to hop in the car. He's fine. Then he ripped off his jeans that had grass stains on them. Be like, I'm not going to wear these. And he was trying his best to fit into Jenny's skinny jeans that what? were in the car. What? He was trying his best. He would. Yep. And then Lynn, mom was like, How you old know, is your father again? Anyway, he, he's up there. Um, but he's not old, but not young. He's like that weird in between. But um, it's like milk. Like it's not the newest milk in the refrigerator, but it's not the oldest milk in the refrigerator. Like you can still drink it. If without. it's not the newest, then it's old. That's not true. You can still drink older milk. Depending on how much it is. This is a weird fucking analogy we just went to. Uh, anyway, the point was. And now I want to vomit. <clears throat> Mom had the coolest lines like, I can't, you can't wear those pants there because I don't want to introduce. I don't want to introduce people to uh, to Tom's gay dad. Um, and I thought that was line was very good. And it was very polished. Everyone would have been very welcoming to but him. But the though. point was slow clap, Linda. That was amazing. Shenandoah University. That was so it's timely. And that was such an amazing of- thing to think of my dad is like, hello. I will trim your hedges for you. But anyway, um, thank you. That was funny, and I laughed so hard on the inside. I really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, tomorrow I get to graduate, which is really cool. But anyway, today's story for 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 ten months. For some reason, ten was a cool cool like goalpost for me versus nine. Like ten means like there's only two left. Like we're there. I want to do something really neat, and we talked about like when we're going to do this for you guys, which is basically everyone listening right now to the live stream. We had our first few episodes were, how, how would you put it, Carly? Um, rocky. Rocky, yeah. They weren't great. And so what I wanted to do here tonight, because this episode is not just about the fans, it's about us. I'm not going to lie. It's also about us because this is an homage to what we went through. It's about Tommy. It's about, no, it's about us. It's it, Carly, I come on, don't cut yourself short because sadly, I guess I could say sadly, you were here for this whole thing too. And so this whole thing was basically about us and like what we've all been through. And so what I wanted to do today was kind of repeat one of our mistakes. And so I'm going to give you guys a glimpse at what one of our mistakes was. Oh, Not a mistake, our, our learning curve. Would you say, would you call it that, Carly, like a learning curve? Um, I would call it a learning curve. So and one of the learning curves was I this thing right here. Putting in reps. Putting in reps? Yeah. So this was our first episode ever. It's like... A gas form of Adderall. Okay. Whoa. The chamber was stocked with books, coats, <laughs> but not for bedding, running water, and toilet. <laughs> dried food. To running water and toilet. <laughs> so I'm not... You've got your Asian accent while you're reading I'm it. not trying to put you guys through this, but we're just going to give like, this is our first ever episode that we did together. This is literally both people's first time Tom on camera. Tom was trying to read for the first time I was ever. trying to read it the first time on camera in front of people. Carly is like, the lighting we used was like a red with a shine of red on red. And well, we had, I can't say it's much worse than what we have tonight. It's not bad. Literally like, tonight is like but our blue lighting, on blue It's on blue, blue, but we also have different lighting that you guys don't see so you can see our faces. This looks like we're in the hall of a submarine before a nuclear disaster. And then we put the mics in front of our face. You can't see anything. Oh, well, Mike's still course, in front of my face. And then, of course, and this is tonight's about shitting on us, by the way. Yes. And then, of course, we had two amazing gems from this episode. So this is our first episode, by the way, guys, that we ever we taped. We caption this episode, yeah. this episode tonight, week 40, as 
the shit fest. Yeah, I like that shit fest. That will really track on YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, this was the first time Carly and I sat here. We don't even have the studio done in this, which is insane. I know. Like all it's this, this is the wall. first time we actually did this. Didn't we didn't know what to happen. Paint our wall no. at that point. No. The wall That's just painted. like a curtain behind us, nope. isn't it? That was the curtain. In a sealed environment to carefully monitor the <laughs> oxygen intake. I love this. We are in this uh, in this podcast. In this, uh... basically trying to drink fancy drinks, wine to spirits to beer, and tell fun spooky stories to each other. Try to scare each other. This is something I've always wanted to do, um, and we're gonna see how this works. This is the pilot episode. That's the worst I introduction know. I've ever heard. I'm doing pretty good. I am half a glass of wine. <laughs> Ready to be spooked. What are you yes! I am drinking a, it's just like a regular oh drink. But you can't really tell because the lighting was you so can't terrible. can't see what the fuck Anyway, with all this said, and the lighting be bad, mm -hmm. that journey started. And I ha I'm proud to announce this, that this time, when we started this episode six months ago, no, 10 months ago. My apologies. We didn't know what we were getting into. At this point, Spirits and Ghost Stories and Fishing the DMV combined have 9,000 downloads. Boop, boop. We have over 9,000 downloads between the two podcasts we do. And this is what's crazy. Fishing the DMV, I knew it was going to be local. And you don't have to worry about that for this show here. Spirits and Ghost Stories is the most international thing ever. I know. Literally, I think... 60% of our downloads are from out of country, like out of, out of the United States, whether it is Germany or Americans Great Britain like or Ireland, which is insane. <gasps> but the point is, like, I never thought if you told me like a year ago, it was like, oh, yeah, you know who likes you? Germany, Wales, Thailand, Wales. Like, that's what's insane. And they're the ones. And then shout out to Minnesota. You know who you are. Minnesota. You literally, because I looked at this when I started compiling week, this this episode. Every week, Minnesota you download has downloaded every single episode uh -huh. we've ever done every week. Yep. I don't. Whoever you are, please email me, please, because I want to give you something because Tell you us. were there through everything. Tell us who you are because you're and that's a good segue. Our best friend now. And that's a good segue into the next two points I'm going to make. We made friends, though, off of this first episode because in this episode, I said, hey, please email me whether you hate me or whether you love me. I just want to know a response. And we're going to give you a gift card, right, Carly? Yep. Yep. And from there, friends were made. Yep. What happened? They were. What happened, Carly? So while we were in Florida. You guys speak up your voice a little bit, but yeah. While we were in Florida, literally. Oh. In Florida, we were getting married. Tom. I was getting there. Continue. You didn't even let me finish my sentence. Sorry, go, go for it. We went to Florida to get married during that week. So we flew down. We were going to be there basically for a week. And then that weekend, we were tying the knot. Okay. So during that week, we get an email from one of our fans from Spirits and Ghost Stories. Basically like, <clears throat> um, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Um, no, go for it. it. it the yeah. highlights. Basically, what the hell? You guys are really weird. Like, you can't read. Tom, you've got a porno voice. It sounds like you're from some 70s porno. The wording was, because I never, this burnt into my head because it's so passive aggressive and unique, was, <laughs> what the hell? Your voice and, and Tess, I, this comes from a place of love, by the way. This is a place of love. <sighs> and, and this individual said, your voice is a mix of an 80s porno actor yes. and NPR radio. Yes. And yes. for some reason, that was both hurtful and insightful. She's like, I time. don't know that I'm going to watch any more of your, your episodes, but I just had to give you this feedback. And I was like, okay. So then from there, we started this email chain where we just have been emailing back and forth and emails turned into text messages and text messages turned into phone calls <clears throat> and Tess, we love you. Our bestie out in Cali. Um, She's been a friend of the show ever since. Lots of support, lots of feedback, which I think has in turn benefited all of you because we've taken all of her feedback to heart and implemented it for our show. And that was the uptick. I like NPR. <laughs> Uh, sorry, do, Carolyn. Carolyn. Shout out. Um, and that was the that was the uptick. I love the other comment that I ended up having to delete, which stuck me for some reason, which was a person got on and commented. It was one of our first comments, actually. And if you have never done social media before and you put a little bit of your soul out there, you're like, oh, what is this? What is this? 
adoring human being on the internet have to say about me? And I, I will burn into my head this because the way he said it was both hurtful and hilarious, which was like, I want to thank you so much for coming on and actually doing this YouTube channel. I suffer from a mental disability and I have trouble speaking and talking and knowing that you're able to do this gives me hope that I'm going to be able to get through high school. <laughs> and I, I <laughs> you're an inspiration to us all, Tommy. And I don't know to this day, like, you know what I mean? Like that was so real well written. I was hurt, but then I'm like, is he telling the truth? Like that's the way it's so well written. Right. It could be like, was he being sarcastic was he being and trying sarcastic. to be an asshole or was he being really kind yeah. and like, Oh my gosh, you changed my life. He's like, listen, I have such bad mental ailments. Looking at you makes me feel better about myself or is it him being an asshole? Right. So you can't be mad. Cause you're like, there's a 50, 50 shot there. Mm -hmm. Well, all those fun things happened from this episode that I'm about to tell the first episode that you and I sat here to do the first episode before this was built the first episode before fishing the dmv went from zero to a lot in no time at all the first episode before i learned how to talk to people without the first that episode that that deep in that our voice where he learned that he needed to edit his content before he read it so with that said we're going to get into the first the beginning which is the russian sleep experiment this is one of the the most heavily trafficked uh, like stories on the internet and i thought it was a good one to start with but i thought it was good like for the 10 10 month anniversary i'm giving myself redemption i've done appalachian which is the highest ranked video we've ever done by the way which is it's me honestly the second highest though was her water kelpie by the way that was Ponies. the second best. <laughs> and so I thought I'm going to give myself another chance here. Please at home, if you're drinking, I want you to comment or, again, leave hate mail because it feeds my soul. Or take a shot. Either way, for every time I make a mistake tonight. Take a shot. Okay. Carly, move your drink over to you a little bit more in the glass. And Carly will help keep you with time. So at home, if you're not good with spelling, watch Carly. And anytime she puts the glass to her mouth, I know, long. I know a little bit that I must have messed up a wording. Does that sound good? I think we're all going to love this. We're making a little bit of fun of me. And hopefully now that I have a master's degree in business, I hopefully can, can I get read. real technical with this. Yes. Go like for words it. that are supposed to be plural, but you're making it singular. I don't know how you'll do that on this, but yes, go oh, for I it. Can do it. So without further ado, guys, tonight's retelling of one of the best stories uh, ever put forth on the internet. The Russian sleep experiment. Before. But first, we get into the story. We need a little backdrop because, unlike my older self from 10 months ago, I put some effort into this one. Yeah, I did. Can we read your mom's comment first? Yes. My mother said, Your wife will be drunk in an hour based on your ability to read. Wow, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Let us get into today's story. <clears throat> Carly, what do you know about the Russian sleep experiment? I know a lot. We talked about it in episode one. So basically. Anyway, so she would usually say, if we actually prep this, I don't know a lot. Continue to tell me. Oh, please well, tell me everything you know. Well, I know nothing. I'm going to edit that out. Um Experimentation and medicine research perform unwilling subjects included disabled, like disabled by Nazis or whether it was the medieval Huns. Like this is something that's been going around forever. And the Russian sleep experiment is actually just based on military science experiments. And so in of itself, it's not so unheard of when you think about the history of the world when it comes to war and the industrial military complex and the ability to push people past their limits. Joseph Mengele, aka the angel of death, used to experiment on Jewish Holocaust prisoners during the war. One of his famous experiments, he mutilated and sewed together two twins to see if they could actually feel pain. Ew. He also injected dye into one of their eyes to see if the others would turn. This happened, actually. And no one ever knew what happened to him, by the way, because he actually escaped to South America. But it wasn't just Nazi Germany that did this stuff. No. 
Japan during World War II, they, they might have had even more egregious experiments. They had a unit called Unit 731, and they exper the experiments they did were just horrendous, including diseased injections into people, controlled dehydration, biological weapon testing on live subjects, vivisections, which is the live opening of individuals to watch their organs work and fail, amputations where they would take and they would freeze people out in the Mongolian wilderness to watch how hypothermia would work and pour water over again and again on limbs until they would shatter. And weapons testing of such horrendous sorts we can't even speak of. These victims included babies, children, men, and pregnant women. Their most famous test was to see how STDs would be transferred to make sure yeah. their soldiers would be okay. But of course what they did was have to rape people constantly to see the passage of these pathogens. And I tell you this now because Based on just Unit 731, over a million people were murdered. But they weren't just people because the, the Japanese scientists that were in this experiment and the guards were not allowed to refer these, to these people as people. They had to be referred to as logs because deep down they were no better than the wood that you would use to burn in a fire. So it would be Log 31 or Log 37. This is just a few of the experiments done on people in our recent past in history that we do to push for the ultimate soldier. But that's not where it stopped because then there was something else that happened, which was using substances to break away from sleep. Germany developed and used methamphetamines called Peruvate during World War II. They gave their soldiers over 35 million tablets of this during the six weeks of the Battle of France in the summer of 1940. Um, Peruvate is, um, is basically just a version of Adderall, old school Adderall. And so within the first six weeks of that battle, they gave over 35 million tablets to their soldiers. Well, Great Britain, they also retaliated because they learned about this. And they used benzodiastrophine which was officially sanctioned by the British Royal Air Force in 1941 in both tablet and inhaler form. And this was basically to make your soldiers more alert, not afraid of death. And here's the big thing. Didn't need sleep. General Dwight Eisenhower himself ordered half a million benzodiaphrin tablets for American troops deployed in North Africa in 1942. The British, too, made sure their soldiers were hopped up on speed at all times. A 1942 memo from the commanding officer stated that soldiers of the 24th Armored Tank Brigade should receive 20 milligrams of benzodiastrophine per day during their time in Egypt. The recommended dosage for Royal Air Force pilots during that time, meanwhile, was 10 milligrams. Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> By the time, <clears throat> by the end of the war, Great Britain issued over 72 million tablets, while the United States issued somewhere between 250 million and 500 million tablets. And this was just basically, it is basically Adderall mm -hmm. to break sleep. Mm -hmm. The abuse of this substance, it, it, it was widespread. But the problem with substance like this, and of course everyone knows this when they don't get a lot of sleep, is it leads to high aggression and paranoia. And this is kind of the backdrop of this experiment. Because this experiment took place right after World War II, when Russia saw what Germany was experimenting on, because they captured a lot of their scientists and their data. Mm -hmm. and they also knew what our troops were doing. And so they thought, what if we could create soldiers that never had to sleep, that never had to feel that that lull when your brain gets foggy. What if they could go 30 days plus without sleep? Time now for the tale of the Russian sleep experiment. Russian, Russian researchers in the late 1940s after World War II kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphone and five inch thick glass portholes, sized windows into the chambers to be able to monitor the patients. The chamber, what? Yeah, portholes? I just said portholes, didn't I? 
You did. Okay. But it made me think of the first episode. Oh my gosh. My edgemic drink, 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 drink. <laughs> Benzo, benzodiaphrin. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. I listened to Google Translate today on my way to my ceremony. Oh, I know sure. it's not correct. I don't know that I can tell you how to pronounce Benzo it, but diaphrin? I know that the way he's saying it is right. Benzodiaphrin. I'm pretty sure that's better than what I did last time. So, win for Tom. <laughs> so, anyway, the chamber was stocked with books, coats to sleep, cots to sleep on. There um, we go. Bedding. God damn it. <laughs> You're making me think about the spelling now. This will be better than last time, though. It had beds to sleep on, <gasps> running water, toilets, and enough dried food to last all five for at least a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Probably just normal people that just didn't like what was going on, by the just way. Just disagreed with <laughs> yeah. the decisions well, I don't like what made. you do. Like, congratulations. You're part of this test subject now. <laughs> Everything was fine for the first five days. The subjects hardly complained having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. So listen, don't sleep for 30 days. You get out of it. No problem. Their conversations and activities were monitored and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasing traumatic incidents in their past, which kind of gets back to the idea with the Adderall that like you get a little warped with it. (laughs) And the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the day four mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstance and events that led them to where they were. It started to demonstrate severe paranoia. Mm. They stopped talking to each other and began alternating whispering to the microphone and one way mirror portal. So they basically were like talking to, they were talking to the microphone and they were just staring at the portal, talking to it. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades. The other subjects in in captivity were just as eager to try to turn over their friends. At first, the research the research suspects at first the researchers suspected that it was the gas that actually did this. After nine days, the first of the individuals started to scream. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. That's me. Holy crap. Basically a little baby. Yep. Like you. Uh, That would be like you. Throwing it to interject. Nine days later, that's me. Yep. Uh, And I live with that, by the way, guys. No, that'd be me two days later. he, (laughs) he, He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce an occasional squeak. The researchers pontificated that he had physically torn his vocal cords from all the screaming. Oh, wow. So he screamed himself basically past the sleep. So basically like when those little calves are like are separated from their mothers and we're out there going, Ugh. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> Okay. And they were like I was really destroying good at that. Yeah, that's, your childhood was not been amazing. The individual uh, continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce an occasional squeak. The researchers uh, pontificated that he destroyed his vocal cords. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphone until the second of the captives started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared the pages, page after page in their own shit, and pasted them calmly over the portholes. That's just such a weird thing. I love that. Like, literally, they went so crazy. They just covered the walls and shit, which I just love. The screaming promptly stopped. So what that means, basically, is they knew if they covered the walls and shit, the guy would stop talking. <laughs> I want everyone to try that at home. Carol Ann, <laughs> listen, when you're dealing with kids when in your When all classes, else fails, grab a bucket of shit and cover the walls. And people will stop talking, but they'll be thinking a lot of other questions. So, uh, so the screaming promptly stopped. So did the whispering to the microphones. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working, since they thought it was impossible that no sound could be coming from the chamber when there's five people living inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five members must be alive. In fact, It was the amount of oxygen that five people would consume at a heavy level of strenuous activity, which is insane. So what they're saying is 
these people their bodies are basically I don't know, hyperventilating or whatever because they haven't been able to sleep yeah because of whatever gas that they actually had that they were pumping into these poor people yeah on the morning of the 14th on the 14th day the researchers did something they said they would they would not do and they tried to get a reaction from the captives they used the intercom inside the chamber hoping to provoke any response from the captives they and they were afraid were either dead or in a veg, like a vegetative state at this point the researchers announced over the comms we are opening the chambers to test the microphones step away from the door lie flat on the floor or you will be shot compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom to their surprise they heard a single phrase in a calm voice respond we no longer want to be freed debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research unable to provoke any more response using the intercoms it was finally decided to open the chambers at midnight on the 15th day so that's interesting if you get that kind of response you got you are in a shit covered room mm -hmm. and you haven't slept for basically 15 days and you say now you don't want to be freed so these people are broken they're high off their ass they're, they're high off their ass so imagine like you're on adderall 24 7 you couldn't sleep right like that would be insane that would be wow that's that's not good so the chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air and immediately voices from the microphone began to object three different voices began begging as if pleading for the life of a loved one to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever. I knew you were gonna catch me on that sentence. I knew I didn't read it right. They, they began to scream louder than ever and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state that they were in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. Wow. There were chunks of meat from the dead test subject, thighs and chest, stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Precisely how much of that water on the floor was actually water and not blood was never determined all four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies the destruction of the flesh had exposed bone on had exposed bone on their fingertips on the alive people yeah because they've been like picking at themselves yes indicating that the wounds were inflicted by hand not with teeth as researchers initially thought so they've been plucking their skin and flesh away Closer examination of the position of the angles of the wounds indicated that most of it, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. Yeah. The abnormal organs below the rib cage, the ab the abdominal organs, the abdominal organs. I said that right. The abdominal organs. God damn it. The abdominal organs abnormal below abnormal organs. The abdominal organs below the rib cage of all four test subjects had been removed, while the heart lungs and diaphragm remained in place the skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off exposing the lungs through the rib cage all the blood vessels and organs remained intact they had been taken out and laid on the floor fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects what what part oh i'm sorry did i read big fancy words and you didn't understand it Whose organs are on the ground? They, to keep themselves awake, they ripped out their own organs and fanned it around their bodies. So they were all, their organs are laying. How yes. did they not bleed to death? The, the digestive tract of all four could be seen to be working, digesting food. It was quick, it quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh. They had ripped off and eaten over the course of days. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to go turn to the chamber to remove the test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternately begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on. Least they fall asleep. 
To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off. What? And an artery in his leg severed. What? I knew testicles would get you up. But yeah, his balls were removed from his body. Like a goat. Like, meh. An artery on his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives if you count the ones that committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. Oh, no. In the struggle, in, in the struggle one of the four living subjects had his spleen rupture, and he bled out almost immediately. The, the medical staff that was on hand attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of morphine, or morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal breaking the ribs and arms of one doctor when the heart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out to the point where there was no there was nothing but air in his vac vascular system even after it stopped he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating these words, more, more, over and over, until he finally fell silent. Ew. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begged for the gas, demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operation room that the facility had. In the process of repairing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative, and they had to be given they had to give him a different sort of um, prep to get him ready for the surgery. He fought so furiously against the restraints that a full-grown 200-pound soldier holding him with two-inch leather straps couldn't keep him down. It took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, but the instant his eyelids started to flutter and close, his heart stopped. Mm. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal levels of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle to be sedated. <laughs> Most of them were from the force his own muscles had exerted on them. So his muscles became so strong they actually shattered bone. Because of how much oxygen was in his blood? Yeah. The second survivor had been the first of the group of five to start screaming. His vocal cords were completely destroyed. He was unable to... He was unable to beg or object to the surgery, and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval. When the anesthetic gas was brought near him, the he shook gas? his head. Anesthetic? Anesthetic gas was brought near him? He shook his head. Yes, when someone suggested reluctantly that they do the surgery without any gas. <laughs> And did not react when the entire, through the entire six hour procedure of replacing his abdomen, his, putting his organs back into his body, attempting to cover them up with the remaining flesh that they had. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically impossible for the patient to still be alive. One terrified nurse assisting the surgeon stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. Creepy. So he's trying to hook up with the nurse. Yep. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while, while, while struggling. Assuming this must be something of drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and a pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well, although they had to be injected with a 
a paralyzing agent for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researcher with their eyes. The, the paralyzing agent cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the gas to be turned back on. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas. Only one of the patients responded, We must remain awake. All three subjects' restraint, restraints were reinforced, and they were placed back into the chamber, awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. Researchers facing the wrath of their military beneficiaries for having failed at the stated goals of their project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, a former KGB agent, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. I love his like, there's potential here. There's potential what here. What potential is here? T they potential. ripped out their guts. They're now zombie we can creatures. Learn, we can learn from these Could you creatures. imagine if this was just a drug to help kids with testing? And it's like, listen, <laughs> there's still some good here. Because it's not going to be, we're not going to market it for what it was originally right. for. Right. This is now going to be used for athletes. So Jimmy John turned into a psychopath. But, into but a trust psychopath. me, trust me. Broke all his There's body still parts. some good here. There's still some good. That is the person that you don't like in your company because they're always too positive, yep. by the way. Yep. So I'm not saying like being positive is not a problem, but during... Oh, <laughs> I don't want to look up at the board. because <laughs> Don't do it. I'm not going to look up at the board. I'm not gonna, it's very disheartening. I feel like I'm doing good, but I'm been told I'm not. You're doing well. In preparation for being sealed into the chamber again, subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was slipped that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that at this point, all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The new subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all of his might. First his left, then his right, then his left again for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off the pillow and blinking rapidly, having been the first to be wired to the EEG. Most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in absolute amazement. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined unexpectedly it looked as if he 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 was repeatedly suffering from brain death before returning to normal as they focused on the paper scrolling out on his brain waves monitoring his activities only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow his brain waves immediately changed to that of somebody in deep sleep then flatlining for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped <gasps> So they knew they would die if they fell asleep. The only remaining subject that could speak started to scream to be sealed in now. His brainwave showed the same flatlineness as one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside as well as three researchers. One of them, one of the named three researchers immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to the bed, and yelled out, I won't be locked in here with these things. Not with you, he screamed at the man at the man strapped to the table. What in the hell are you? he demanded. I must know. The subject looked at him and curled his smile into a grin. Have you forgotten so easily? The subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that looks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal minds. We are your, your hidden from your beds every night. We are what you, you sedate into silence and paralyze when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out. So, 
nearly for he and that was the tale of the russian sleep experiment 2.0 well thank you tom i really enjoyed it the second time around a lot better than i enjoyed it the first time around to be completely honest with you <sighs> the not good drunk 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 not good drunk. it was so much easier to concentrate on the words coming out of your mouth because i'm not plastered currently <laughs> and you're not plastered currently Compared to last time so I just remember so many words that came out of your mouth. I was like, wait, what? Trying to piece together a sentence that made sense. But that story is still creepy, I, even after the second time of hearing it. Yeah. So what do you think of it? What do you think about what happened? Well, I mean, I'm st- the first time I heard it, I was confused a lot because like, why would a person self mutilate? But then at the end of the day, it's just because they were so like drugged up by the gas. And you say that they was like on on Adderall, but I would bet that they're on like you know like basically a million other levels of just being like high out of their mind, LSD and shit. Because like people that have been on rooms that's laced with stuff have mm-hmm. gone to the point of like actually trying to murder someone else that they're in the room with because they think that they're a monster kind of deal. So like in that point of view, like they have gas that keeps them from sleeping, but say that gas also gives them the effects of being on shrooms that's laced with something. Okay, now they just turn into an animal, right? And then then and then days on upon days upon days, which they probably feel like it's been years at this point because mm-hmm. time just slows down. Like, okay, well, now this is their new normal. <laughs> but I find it strange that they don't talk at all. They don't they don't seem to communicate with themselves on the mics because they said they don't even hear like a pin drop in the room. But then there's this one guy that's like, you know, we are your darkest nightmares whatever we 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 or we've decided this like you know we have decided we don't want to be freed you know we don't want to be freed anymore okay we why is he saying we when like no one's collectively said hey we don't want to get out of here now so this is one of our super fans from tonight's live stream which is they are no you you go ahead carly i have my they're on amphetamines is the story true question mark so (laughs) <laughs> yes, parts of the story are true. Um, this story is actually made by Creepy Pasta, but a lot of it is actually made up of what I just said. So it is true that there were experiments done in the 1940s, 1950s about keeping you awake. And actually, it was found out that you can be awake for 30 days because in the 1940s, an individual in Great Britain was kept awake for 50 days. 50 with no with no issues he was kept awake for and this was so fun and i didn't i didn't have the full story here guys because like it is a crazy story google it the long the individual stay awake the longest it actually happened it was a thing they forced him to stay awake for over for i think it was like over 50 days if i'm not mistaken or it was 15 but i think it's 50 probably 15 but the point is 50 sounds unhealthy. he was forced to stay awake for as long as the initial experiment went through with no physical damage except massive paranoia uh-huh. where this is what I thought was funny. He got away from the doctors that were keeping him in his house because they started to look like grim reapers to him. And he ran down the road screaming his head off. This is true. Fact check it. If you want wow. to, it's insane because he thought the grim reapers were after him. But then after some sleep in a month, he recovered with no issues. Wow. So what is interesting about this is the fact that in theory, you can stay awake this long without dying. But you do, you do. Speaking of sleep, yeah, speaking of sleep. But you do actually suffer from paranoia. But what I also think, which adds clear and like clarity to the story, is the fact that three different governments during World War II experimented with amphetamines and Adderall. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting too, fun fact: the um, benzodiazepine. I don't care if I'm saying that wrong. Screw all of you. It was used in Oxford by guess what students. Which is so crazy. So college kids in the 1930s were using basically Adderall to study for tests back then. Then the military picks it up and they use it because they need to keep their soldiers awake for these long bombing runs from Great Britain to Germany. And now they were used during the Vietnam War. And they're still being used for our military in some covert reasons. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the government experimenting on people, 
which gets back to something else that we're actually going to do eventually, guys, which is MK Ultra. Do you know about this? No. So MK Ultra, guys, and this will be a short little, little snippet of this, and Caroline probably knows about this, not because she did it, but just from the science part. Because she's smart. The CIA was doping people on LSD without them knowing it in the United States. Oh, shit. They would show up at bars and give people LSD. Stop. And then research what happened because they thought it would be a great terror weapon that what if you took a population and you all, you dosed everyone simultaneously with LSD? What did they find? They didn't get in trouble at first, but they had destroyed countless lives in their experiments. And it's still said to this day that they actually probably did this to some leaders around the world. Because imagine this. You don't like a leader in a country. Right. What if you gave the president of the United States a dose of LSD before he went to do a major speech? You could ruin his reputation and then you could get If your, he had a reputation. But the point is you could then get your president involved or whatever. So as a terror drug, that's what they were experimenting with. So the idea, and that's what I like about this story, is like they're taking historical references that did happen and they're weaving it in there with with with, with facts and myths together. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very believable and very scary. Plus you had the Soviet Union, which did horrific experiments to their people. Um, one fun fact, which is not fun but dark, one thing that the Soviet Union did um, during the war, World War II, was when they were running out of tanks, they would strap bombs to their dogs and have the them fuck? run out to the German tanks. And they trained them to like go find people and made suicide dogs. And they also did this to their own people. During the Battle of Stalingrad, it was, it was well known that what they would do is they'd have these um, – I love how they called it like security guard attachments, but basically there wasn't enough guns to go around in this battle. So they had people on the bridges pushing people forward. And if anyone fell back, they shot them. And they gave, generally speaking, one gun per two people. So the idea was when that guy died, you pick up the gun. Wow. This all happened during the war in some, in some cases or another. Now, how much did it happen? That will never be known, but it did happen. All, all that I just stated. So the fact that the, the idea of like a Russian sleep experiment where they do this, that tracks like that definitely would have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I they didn't treat people like people. Back I mean, then. I told you about like how they did scientific data on sexually transmitted, transmitted diseases. And that actually did happen. Right. Like, factual evidence. If that happened, the idea of them trapping some, poor fuckers in a, in a vault to see if they wouldn't sleep that makes sense right but that was the russian sleep experiment 2.0 i think i did a lot better with the reading there i hope you guys all enjoyed that i liked um, the um the historical background i appreciated that yeah i really did like i really wanted to do some research about like doing like sleep experiments and then when you find out like yeah during world war ii like everyone was on adderall it's like wait really mm -hmm. it's like yeah like millions of tablets we gave our soldiers which is like really weird when you think about it because everyone came back addicted to a substance they could no longer get yeah but Damn. with that said, I wanted to do a scary thing in the news because that's our new segment that we do here every day. And you I don't have an intro song for that. <sighs> scary thing in the news. I know. But guys, we had to keep you guys watched our last episode where um, we found scary things in the news was a massive turtle. And these two guys, I call that's them a big turtle right Billy there. Billy Bob and Bobby Joe were that's talking on turtle. the screen about this big ass turtle they saw. They thought that it was a, a mythological beast. I needed to do this. I'm sorry, but I, mom, I'm sorry. So, what? yeah, this is a thing, and I need to talk about this. So, uh, in Flemington Elementary School in West Virginia, they believe it's very important that they talk about their culture and their folklore. I know that West Virginia folklore is an important part of our curriculum here. And what are they teaching their curriculum to elementary school kids? Well, they talk about Mothman and Bigfoot. Wow. They teach them about their culture. No. Yes. Where? This is West Virginia. This is Flemington Elementary School Where is in Flemington? West Virginia. We're consistently discovering new species on this planet almost weekly, and I think it's important for kids to realize that it, it might be interesting to them. Who knows? You might have the next super scientist. I love how this person, like super scientist, <laughs> come out of the, one of these schools right here. I just, I can hear the tone, and that's what I love about this article so much. I found I was like, uh, <laughs> Let me do this in my West Virginia points. Who knows? You might have one of them next uh, super scientists right here come out of one of these here schools right here. You just never know. I think just giving them that little spark may help them advance themselves to that unique their interest to certain topics, Spinks says. Um, <laughs> Spinks presents much of his first 
in-person presentation to Flemington Elementary School has held since the pandemic began. I think our students learn in so many different ways. And the more opportunities we can provide to our students, the better they will be. Especially if we tell them about our West Virginia mascot, Mothman and Bigfoot. So I just love... I don't know anyone that talks like that. Have Flint, you been West to West Virginia? Virginia is two hours and 45 minutes away. Yeah, so she doesn't FYI. know that about West Virginia. But I just love that West Virginia is now teaching people about <laughs> Mothman folklore. Yeah. And then it was like so insane. And my mom can talk about this because my mom actually did see Mothman, by the way, Caroline. She did. Um, and her mother did. Like how culturally significant that is to West Virginia, which is insane to me. Like they know, like you ask anybody deep in West Virginia. You ain't lived in West Virginia unless you've seen Mothman. Yeah, that's what, it's so crazy. Like you ain't lived here. What, what, what what is this? Yes, I do know people that went to the. (laughs) Oh my God. Not the comment here by Linda says, yes, I do know people that went to the elementary school. And she says, like, I do know a bunch of individuals that actually talk like this. I don't know anyone that talks like that. Isn't that crazy? People talk like that. That's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, um, yeah, that was scary stuff in the news. The fact that, like, West West Virginia, you please keep being wild and wonderful. I love you. That last week, this is stuff, guys. All I typed was West Virginia monsters in the news. And you know what? Last week, I did that. You know what popped up first? Two, Two fishermen. Two fishermen see massive twelve foot turtle in a in a river. Yep. The river, it's a creek. It's so, a creek. Uh, and they talk like, for thirty minutes about this monster turtle they found. Knees. They're like, "It's a monster turtle." They're outside in the middle of the night. And I'm like, you know what? I can't be. Can't be two weeks in a row. And I type in today, like, "What's for you, monsters and news?" Boom. Elementary school is proud that we talk about our heritage. It's like, oh my god, you guys are just awesome. Like every week, every I, week I'm just gonna type. To talk about. I'm just gonna type in this, guys. This will be a new thing. I'm gonna type in just West Virginia monster in the news and just see if every single week we're here. Perfect. They just have a new one. It's just it's because, like, three weeks ago when I did, like, no, four weeks ago when I did Snallygaster, they talked about West Virginia Bigfoot. I was like, we're gonna talk about Bigfoot next. So, like, literally three times I've like typed this in, and West Virginia, you keep popping up with some juicy stories about whether. Like and I love this. Like it's it's a circle of life. Honestly, you teach your kindergartners about these cryptids and stuff, and then you and your friend Baba Joe, you go to the local creek to go fishing, and guess what? You see the turtle man. You see that big old twelve foot turtle right there. Yeah, I love it so much. They are uh, your relatives. They are your relatives. I'll read it out loud for the viewers, Tom. I don't want to go there. Yep. Yes, I do know people that went to that elementary school. My mother also said in the live chat, you were one of the... Where's your moonshine? And so it's on that bombshell, guys. I really hope you like this. Week 40. We did it. Week 40. Awesome stuff, guys. 10 months Um, in the books. Thank you so much to all of our our international listeners. We really appreciate it. If it wasn't for you guys, none of this could actually be done. Um, You make this awesome. And that was the Russian sleep experiment. Actually said with better words, I think, than last time. I didn't sound like a... Honestly, I knew I was going to be having problems with speaking, like the words, but I didn't sound like a 70s porno. No, you didn't. And so like... Major improvements. Tess. Good job, Bobby. Tess, I did this for you. Thank you so much for everybody. And we will see you next week on Spirits Spirits and and Ghost Ghost Stories. Stories. Bye. Bye.